tonight sees the first big election test for two men, one of whom will be the UK's next Prime Minister. There are 700,000 people on zero hours contracts. Could you live on one? No, I, look, some, as I said, Could some people... Could you live people, on one? Well, you have to, I want to create a country where more people have the opportunity of the full-time work that they want. Could but you live on people, a zero-hours contract? Well, look, it's not, that's not the question. The question is... Well, is, it's the question I'm asking. Well, yeah, look, <laughs> so, but the point is some people choose a zero-hours contract. If you're a student, for instance, and you want to do some part-time work, a zero-hours contract can work for you. Well, we know that it is possible to make the savings in welfare, like we made. We made 20 billion sorry, of welfare savings. I don't want savings. to be rude, but um, do you know, and you're not telling us... Or do you not know? No, we know there will be difficult decisions and we'll have to go through every part of the welfare budget. But we believe just as we've saved 20 billion in welfare in this parliament, we will be able to find a further 10 billion of welfare savings in the next parliament. Let me give you some more examples. We're going to cut the, the welfare cap we put in place, saying no family should get more than £26,000 a year in welfare. We're going to reduce that to twenty. Three thousand. That's not within the. We think that is. We either. think that is. We think that's the right thing to do. We're going to say when it comes to young people that young people when they leave school they should be either earning or learning. They should be doing an apprenticeship, yeah. looking at higher education. They shouldn't be able to go straight on to unemployment benefit and housing benefit. The, all of these things. Changing welfare, Jeremy, isn't just about saving money. No. It's about trying to but you, help people's lives. No it's about trying to. Well, I'm just talking about it. transparency, and you don't tell us what you're going to do. You promised. You used the word promise. The people of Britain and France will stand by you as you build your country and your democracy. Those were your words. Do you regret saying that? No. You haven't even got an embassy in I, Libya I don't, I don't regret saying that. I mean, first of all, I think it was right with France and America to stop Colonel Gaddafi when he was going to butcher his own people in Benghazi. If we had not stepped in, if I hadn't ordered those aeroplanes into the sky, mm. uh, we would have seen a massive catastrophe in Benghazi of people butchered. It was the right thing to do. Now, I don't accept that we left the Libyan people after that. We put in aid, we put in military training, we put in political assistance. It just hasn't been possible to date to get the different Christians parties in Libya. Christians are being Libya. beheaded on the beach. Well, it hasn't yeah. been possible to get the different Libyan parts of government together to get the warlords to put down their weapons, but we're still trying, even now, with people out there, uh, trying to bring that, bring that about. But it has been, I accept, a very difficult situation. All of us who put ourselves forward all actually believe in serving the public, in trying to do the right thing. We disagree with each other, sometimes passionately, sometimes, as yesterday in the House of Commons, rather noisily, uh, but we all believe in public service in trying to do the right thing for our country. One thing I admire about uh, Ed is that uh, when we had to take difficult decisions about sending British forces in to help with others to try and defeat ISIL, the murderous death cult in Iraq, he stepped forward and said, yes, this is the right thing to do, David, let's, let's do that together and vote together in the House of Commons, and I admired that. But you did call him weak and despicable, didn't you? We do sometimes in the House of Commons use um, phrases that perhaps uh, afterwards we think perhaps was a bit over the top. Something I, I took my... Top? Well, I remember the same day he called me dodgy and something else. So sometimes I took my children yesterday and uh, Nancy and Elwyn, they're nine and 11, and they said afterwards, you know, Dad, if we behave like that at school, um, you know, it wouldn't be so good. So I was trying to explain, sometimes it gets a bit heated. Where I live in my borough, we had to take you and your government to court to keep our hospital open. So I feel very let down with conservative, conservative policy on the NHS and I'm just wondering, if you don't do what you say, what, the, the promises you made last time have been broken, as far as I'm concerned. So how can we trust you next time? What, what I'd say, the, the biggest promise we made about the NHS at a time when we were going to have to make difficult cuts in public spending, as anyone, Prime Minister, when I was Prime Minister, would have to do, we said we will not cut the NHS, and we haven't. We've increased spending on the NHS by over £12.7 billion over the last five years. Okay. And because this is a really important point, can yeah. I just quickly... What we did in terms of changing the NHS is we, we got rid of 20,000 bureaucrats in the NHS and we put that money into 9,000 more doctors and 7,000 more nurses. And as a result, we're treating more patients. If you take something just like cancer, we're seeing 460,000 more people and looking at their potential cancer than we were uh, five years ago. So the biggest promise we made more money, safeguarding that money, and treating more patients has been kept. And if you elect me again 
as your Prime Minister, with a strong economy, because that's the key to afford this, we'll go on investing in our National Health Service. Do you not think that your brother would have done a better job? Oh. He... <laughs> hold, hold on, hold on. He was better qualified and better positioned. OK, well, it'll surprise you to know that my answer is no. Uh, <laughs> I wonder, though, uh, Mr Miliband, what, what regrets you have about creating such division in your family? It's hard. Well, it's hard. I'll make no bones about it. It's hard. In what way is it hard? Well, because it was bruising. Uh, I mean, you know, it was bruising for me. It was bruising for David. It, it's, it's healed or healing, I would say. Just be completely frank with you about that. Um, but... So you did uh, fall out, or...? Well, we had a very difficult contest, so it was very difficult. Did you not talk, or...? No, it wasn't that we didn't talk, but it was... I would say it was strained. No, You've I got agree. form on false promises on immigration, haven't you? Me, personally. Your government, yeah, your we got party... It, we got it wrong. You got it completely we wrong. We got it wrong, yeah. It was, your figures were farcical. Yeah, they were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> let me say two things, though, about right. this, which are important. OK, you Can, said... No, I, I just want, let me just make a point about immigration, because you asked me a question, let me answer it. Look, I, I think that we benefit from our diversity. Uh, immigrants over the years have made a big contribution to our country, but we do need we, proper controls. Let, let me just say this, Jeremy. No, we, a Labour government would say that if people come here, they can't get benefits for the first two years, yeah. and we will do something else. I'm not we'll talking stop, about benefits. I'm but you're talking, talking about immigration. About, I'm talking about numbers. Right, and uh, let me tell you, the way we will... Supposing the way we got to a figure of 70 million in 10 or 15 years, population in this country, is that acceptable? I'm, or not? I'm not going to get into your hypotheticals. Let, let me say, I think we can get low-skill migration well, down. So... I, I'm not going to start no speculating number about too numbers. Great. No, I'm not saying that. 75 but, million? Uh, 80 uh, million? Come on. 95 million? 100 million? Uh, what about Alex Salmon's other types of blood money that he would like to exempt or exert from England? Uh, what about, for example, a uh, promise not to recommission Trident, perhaps move it out of Scotland? Would you go along with that? No. No, you wouldn't. Uh, what about starting the high-speed rail line back to front, as it were, in Scotland? No, look, I'm not going to get into a bargaining game with Alex Salmond. Look, he's not... We're not you have are. No, I'm not. <laughs> you are. If you have any chance of forming a government, you will, won't you? No, don't be so presumptuous. You've got six weeks to go. You've got six weeks to go. You don't get to decide the election results six weeks before the general election. You're important, Jeremy, but not that important. It's the British, I don't want, it's the British I don't, people. It's the British people. I don't people. want to decide it. No, come on. But you know no, there is no... No, no, no. You no, no, no. Know there it's the British people. No, 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 no. Let me finish the point. You it's the British people. You are seriously suggesting you can get an overall Absolutely majority. Absolutely right. right. Absolutely okay. right. Okay. You understand what the point is here. The point is, people think you're just not tough enough. Well, uh, let, let me tell you, right? Let, let me tell you. OK. <laughs> Come on. Let, let me tell you. OK, in the, in the summer of 2013, this government proposed action in Syria, the bombing of Syria, right? Mm. I was called into a room by David Cameron and Nick Clegg because President Obama had been on the phone, the leader of the free world, right? I, I listened to what they said, and over those days, I made up my mind, and we said no. Right? Now, I think standing up to the leader of the free world, uh, I think, shows a certain toughness, I, I would say. Are you proud of what's happened in Syria since? I'm not proud of it, no. It's a failure of the international community. But what I'm not going to do is repeat the mistakes of the 2003 Iraq war, which happened when, when Labour was in power, which is a rush to war uh, without knowing what your strategy is uh, and without being clear about what the consequences would be. I I'm not a pacifist, so I did support action in Libya. And David Cameron uh, talked about how I supported action against ISIS. But am I tough enough? H tough enough? Hell yes, I'm tough enough. They see you as a North London geek. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? Who does? Well, it was mentioned earlier by a member of the audience. Yeah. A lot of people, when they look at your candidacy for the most powerful job in mm -hmm. the land, mm -hmm. they look at you and they think, what a shame it's not his brother. Well, look, look, you know, uh, that's obviously not the way I see it, is it? No, of course it isn't. No, exactly. Uh, you know, look, you see, need a toughness in this job. Mm. You need a toughness. People have thrown a lot at me over four and a half years, right? But I'm a pretty resilient guy. And I've been underestimated at every turn. People said I wouldn't become leader, and I did. People said four years ago, he can't buy, become prime minister. 
I think I can. You're saying I can't win a majority. I think I can. So let people underestimate me. But what I care about is what is happening to the British people in their lives. And I think I can change it. And I know I'm the right man for the job. That's why I'm sitting here. Uh, and that's why I, I believe that I'm the best choice to be Prime Minister. Ed Miliband, thank you. Thank you. You're okay, Ed. Sorry? You're all right. Yeah. You.